make arrangements that the room in which you are <clears throat> conducting the hypnotic session is quiet and that there is not likely to be any interruptions. Also that the room is neither too hot nor too cold and above all that there are no drafts. See that your subject is comfortably seated or lying down while you are making these introductory remarks. Tell him to relax whilst he is listening to you and in this way he will become it will become more he will become more at ease and more amenable to and ready for your hypnotic induction. No two hypnotists work alike for the simple reason that each one develops his own technique according to his personality and experience. An excellent way in which to commence an induction is to ask your subject to take a number of deep breaths. You can then begin to take control by saying, now breathe in, deeper, deeper. That's right. Now, out, slowly. Now, in again. In this way, without any sudden takeover, you can quietly assume an authoritative role and your induction will commence smoothly, easily and naturally. Assuming that you are using a fixed gaze method of hypnotizing, as instructed in earlier in earlier sections old some object a ring or a pen will do about 18 inches in front of your subject's face slightly above his eye level so that he has to look slightly upwards and slowly move the object about six inches to the right and then back to the center then to the left. Move, move it slowly from side to side, telling your subject to keep his eyes fixed on it. Whilst you are doing this and his attention is focused on the, sub, on the object you are holding, continue talking and in this fashion you begin to create a split in his consciousness. Tell him that soon his eyes will begin to tire and that involuntarily he will blink. When he does so, tell him that his eyelids will begin to feel very heavy and that it will become more and more of an effort for him to open his eyes. Keep on telling him this, varying your wording. Soon his eyes will tire, partly because of the slight strain of the eyes being directed upwards and partly because of the nearness of the object on which they are focused. You can, without the subject's knowledge, increase this strain whilst moving the object from side to side by moving it slightly upwards and nearer to your subject's face. This increases the strain on the eye muscles. The periods for which your subject's eyes will close will become longer. When this happens and you detect signs that his eyes are fatigued, tell him to rest with his eyes closed and continue talking on on the lines of of the material given in earlier sections for deepening the hypnotic state. To bring about this induction in which you are teaching self-hypnosis, you can use the above or other methods of hypnotic induction described in earlier sections, but with practice you will soon begin to experiment with methods of your own. Continue with your suggestions for deepening the hypnotic state until you judge from signs such as the head lolling over or the body slumping or other obvious signs that your subject is hypnotized. If you are not sure, continue with your suggestions or you can make some tests. But it is best if you are uncertain whether your subject is hypnotized to phrase your suggestions in such a way that he cannot disprove what you tell him. For example, if you say, you cannot raise your arm, and immediately he raises his arm, which he may do if he is only lightly affected, your authority is weakened. 
If you are not certain, it is more prudent to continue with the trans-deepening suggestions for a longer period before making any positive tests. When you feel the subject is sufficiently relaxed, begin to make the suggestions he has requested you to make, or make those which you judge would be helpful. When you have completed these, make the post-hypnotic suggestions that he will be able to induce this hypnotic state in himself and register suggestions in his own unconscious mind. It is better to give precise instructions on just how your subject is to carry out his self-suggestion sessions. Prescribe a definite routine such as, when you are about to begin a self-hypnotic session, breathe deeply 10 times. And as you do so, you will begin to feel relaxed and sleepy. If you are lying down, look at your ceiling. Or if you are sitting, look straight ahead and count silent to yourself. When you get to 10, your eyes will close by themselves. And you will then go on counting silently to yourself, getting sleepier and sleepier as you count. When you reach 20, stop counting and rest for you will have sunk down deeply enough to register suggestions in your unconscious mind. Then remind him, when you reach this detached state, however light or deep it may be, this is when you let your suggestions float silently through your mind in the way I have already described to you. Make a post-hypnotic suggestion to yourself that he will... Make a post hypnotic suggestion to your subject that he will never have any difficulty in waking himself from the hypnotic state. Prescribe some simple routine which he is to use to terminate his hypnotic sessions, such as counting backwards from five and that at one he will be alert and wide awake. After you have concluded your hypnotic sessions with your subject and he is wide awake, check that he understands the routine of hypnotizing himself, also of the way in which he is to rouse himself. It is also sound practice to give him, to have him go through the routine self-induction in your presence to make sure there are no points on which he is not clear. Impress on your subject that even if he has been only lightly affected by hypnotic suggestions, the suggestions will get through to his unconscious mind, even if subjects have been hypnotically affected only in a mild degree. The most surprising benefits from self from this self treatment very frequently come about. Self hypnosis has great value where a number of treatments are required, as in complaints of long standing, where time is necessary for the desired changes to come about or in weight reducing or altering some habit, which might be as slow in going as it was in forming. Self-hypnosis is an invaluable method of treatment for once a patient has been instructed and advised of the way in which he is to work, he can administer a hypnotic or a self-suggestion session as often as desired without the time and expense of visiting a hypnotherapist.